I like to think I'm organized, but sometimes I'm a way to But I want to welcome everyone here this morning uh, on this human August day. Um, anybody know the significance of the 6th of August? I think in 1945 we sent 66,000. It's hard to talk about, even though it was our enemy. We sent 66,000 Japanese into the presence of God Almighty in one big flash. And I pray that that never happens again. Though they're making noises all over the place about it. I think the article I read said that we eventually lost, they lost 200. Thousand people from that atomic explosion. History goes by us and we tend to forget. But we can't forget that. Our announcements this morning the food pantry received about 415 food items from Bible school this year, but they still need things like canned beef canned chicken. And also, we have fresh, I'm, I'm not sure what days they have food distribution days during the month. But if we have fresh produce, they can be given out also on distribution days. Pastor Boyd is uh, in the south. Bless him. I just come, my wife and I just came back from down south. It was a wonderful trip. So I hope he's blessed as well as we were with the scenery and the food and everything else. Um, Fred Boyd is going to be on vacation until the 14th of August. If you have any emergency needs, it's in your bulletin. Pastor Ben Schaefer and his phone number is there. If you need them. And this morning we have Reverend Ken Ladd filling in his place. Not paying this. Yes. But uh, next Sunday we will have our own lay speaker, Mr. Island, will be presenting the message. Tuesday is AA. Friday is Farmers and Crafters Market. Are there any other announcements? Contract. No, I don't 
don't see any hands. So I guess now we can do the prayer.
Many of you knew Ron Armstrong, and he passed away in Texas, in Arizona, last Friday night or Sunday morning. I'm not sure. Uh, the services are being handled by Rodenbergers, and there is a memorial service or a service to be held at the church in Handler. Uh, harvest. Too far away from my eyes, I can't see it. Harvest Fellowship Church in Hanover, and that's at 11 o'clock next Friday. Joe Badenhock had some more heart issues yesterday. Get over in prayer. Let's pray. In return of God and our Heavenly Father, as we come into your presence this morning, some acknowledge in the fact that you are God, and we are but your creation. We thank you for including us as a part of your family, and giving to us the responsibility of sharing your word wherever we go. As we pause in your presence this morning, we come with concern. Concerns for those who have passed from this life and the next for their families. We pray your comforting hand and spirit will be upon them. For those who are dealing with the end of life issues, that your spirit might grant them comfort and strength to know that you are God and that you love them much and you are welcoming them into your arms. Concern for those who are struggling with life's issues, illness, and other issues that we face on a daily basis, which you only know and understand. Reach forth your hand of healing and comfort and strength, that we might feel your abiding presence as you anoint us with your love and Holy Spirit. Pray for a pastor as he's on vacation this day that he might indeed be refreshed as he returns to this flock to minister in their midst. We pray for those who are serving our nation this day in the military that your spirit might make them adequate for the task that is theirs and you'll bless their efforts freedom around the world that all may experience freedom in you. We lift before you those who are elected to places of responsibility in this community, in our state, and in our nation, and throughout the world, that they might in some way come to you and understand that you are ultimately the king of the world. listen to your voice, that we might be able to live together as brothers and sisters, and know that you are God of all. We know that you are present with us. 
us this morning, but we pray, Father, that we might feel your presence as you move in our midst by your Holy Spirit, that as your word goes forth, our lives might be touched and changed. And because of that, we have a desire to go forth and touch and change others in your name. For it's in the name of the Christ that we pray this, as he taught us to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and power. 
talk this morning about crawl between the sheets. But I know that you've got a long night's sleep and you're rested. <laughs> and the football team has a tie score and on their on the four yard line and they have the ball. And it's a fourth down. And I know that you wouldn't be this quiet then. <laughs> So let's sing that first verse like we really mean that God is faithful to us. And we appreciate that fact. So I want to hear you now. I have trouble with this. 
I'm really in trouble. Romans 9, 1 through 5. I say the truth in Christ. I lie not. My conscience also bearing me witness in the Holy Ghost. That I have great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart. For I could wish that myself were accursed from Christ for my brethren, my kinsmen according to the flesh. Who are, who are Israelites to whom pertaineth the adoption and the glory and the covenants and the giving of the law and the service of God and the promises? Whose are the fathers and of whom concerning the flesh Christ came? Who is over all? God bless forever. Amen. And the New Testament reading from John, the sixth chapter, the first to the twenty-first verses. After those things, Jesus went over to see Galilee, which is the Sea of Tiberias. Tiberias. And a great multitude followed him, because they saw his miracles, which he did on them that were diseased. And Jesus, <clears throat> Jesus went up into a mountain, and there he sat with his disciples. And the Passover, a feast of the Jews, was nigh. When Jesus then lifted up his eyes and saw a great company coming unto him, he saith unto Philip, Whence shall we buy bread? that these may eat. And this he said to prove him, for he knew what he would do. Philip answered him, Two hundred penny worth of bread is not sufficient for them, and every one of them, that every one of them may take a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, saith unto him, There is a lad here which hath five barley loaves, Two small fishes, and what are they among so many? And Jesus said, Make the men sit down. Now there was much grass in the place. So the men sat down, in number, about five thousand. And Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed to the disciples, and the disciples to them that were sat down. Likewise of the fishes, as much as they would. When they were filled, he said unto his disciples, Gather up the fragments that remain, that nothing be lost. Therefore they gathered them together and filled twelve baskets with the fragments of the five barley loaves, which remained over and above unto them that had eaten. Then those men when they had been seen a miracle that Jesus did, said, This is the truth, that prophet that should come unto this world. When Jesus therefore perceived that they would come and take him by force to make him a king, he departed again into a mountain and himself alone. And when even was now, and when even was now come, disciples went down unto the sea and entered into a ship and went over the sea toward Capernaum. And it was now dark, and Jesus was not come to them. And the sea arose by reason of a great wind that blew. So when they had rowed about five and twenty or thirty furlongs, they see Jesus walking on the sea and drawing nigh unto the ship. And they were afraid. But he saith unto them, It is I, be not afraid. Then they willingly received him into the ship, and immediately the ship was at the land whither they went. And I ask that God grant us the understanding of his word. Morning. 
1.6 were of the oh, yeah. <laughs> Did one? Yes, there's only one left. They got one gone. <laughs> okay. I'm glad to be able to share with you your worship experience this morning. Uh, I don't come here as a stranger. I've been here a number of times before in various capacities on various occasions. Kay is sitting back there someplace. Uh, she travels with me as I write the shirt occasionally. As we come together this morning, I'd like for us to consider the passage from John chapter 6. Late one cold, wintry, snowy night, the phone rang at the doctor's house. The voice on the other end identified himself and said that his wife was very ill and asked the doctor if he could come at once. The doctor said he would, but his car was in the garage being fixed and so it could not. However, if the man would bring his wife to the doctor, he would be more than happy to see her. And the man replied, what? Do you expect me to drive on a night like this? <laughs> Have you ever noticed that our expectations of others is often greater than our expectations that we have of ourselves? Have you ever expected, had the experience that what you expected to happen in a particular occasion did not happen, but what did happen was better? Or what you said to someone was misunderstood, and the result of that conversation was totally unexpected. Here, John, in his Gospel, tells us two stories both of which had unexpected results, the feeding of the 5,000 and the boat in the midst of a great storm. Jesus crossed the Sea of Galilee and was confronted with, what do you do with a hungry crowd of people? Because a great multitude had followed him, they followed him because they saw the signs that he had done. They saw how he dealt with those people who had diseases and healed them, and they wanted to see more. These were not people who were following him because he was the Son of God, but because of what they saw him do. because of what they saw him do, they knew that he must be the prophet, the one that had been prophesied in the scriptures for hundreds of years. But when Jesus saw the crowd, he went up on the side of a mountainous hill and he sat down with his disciples. Now it's significant that he sat down. Because in that day, when the teacher sat down, it meant that something spectacular, unusual, was going to happen. He was going to say something of great importance. And so Jesus sat down. And he said, Philip, what are we going to do with these people? They're hungry. How are we going to feed all of these people? Now notice Jesus' concern was hospitality. How are we going to meet the needs of these people who are following us? He spoke to Philip because Philip was from the area. He knew where the 24-hour Walmart was. He knew where Kroger's was. He knew where McDonald's was. And so Jesus said, Philip, how are we going to feed all these people? Where are we going to find that much bread? But it was a test. 
Because Jesus already knew what he was going to do. Philip didn't. And so Philip responds to Jesus just like you and I would. He said, Jesus, it would take 200 denier to buy enough bread for all these people, even if we could find it. Now, in today's language, we need to understand that one denier was one day's pay. We're talking about 200 days pay to have enough money to buy enough bread, if it were available, to feed all these people. Now, 200 days pay, if you earn $15 an hour and you work eight hours a day, that's $120 a day, or $24,000 to buy enough bread to feed these people. Besides that, where are you going to find enough bread to feed these people? You could go to Walmart and buy them out. Kroger's and buy them out. Meyer and buy them out. You could go to any local bakery and buy them out and you still would not have enough bread to feed all these people. Besides that, how would you ever get it to the hillside? It would take a couple of semi-truck loads. Quite an experience, quite an expense, and quite a challenge. You ever been faced with a challenge in your life where you didn't quite know how you were going to get through it? Well, here comes Andrew. Andrew comes to Jesus with an idea. He said, Lord, There's a lad here. He's my great-great-grandfather. <laughs> this, this lad was here, and he brought his lunch. His mother thought ahead and gave the boy his lunch, and he still has it. He's got five loaves of bread, and he's got two fish. What can you do with that? And Jesus surprised him and said, Tell the men to sit down. Crowd control. He knew if they were seated, they weren't going to storm the castle. He knew if they were seated, they would only get what they were given at the moment. They wouldn't go cheating around and budging in line. And so he said, Tell them to sit down. 5,000 men. Now that does not include, remember, the women and the children. 5,000 men, and Jesus took these loaves of bread and fish, and he blessed them. Now, come on. How often have you sat down at the table and blessed your food and it multiplied? Oh, I know you women have, have, have on occasion dumped a little extra water in the soup to be able to feed the guests that arrived at dinner time unexpectedly, but here Jesus takes these loaves and he blesses them, and all of a sudden, he says, disciples, pass it out. Now, come on. Let's get real here. Five loaves, that means that the disciples didn't even have a half a loaf of bread. Two fish, that means they didn't even have more than the tail of a fish to pass out, and Jesus said, Pass it out among these 5,000 men and all these women and children. And guess what? They did. And everybody ate their fill. Did you expect that? No, not really. Had you not read the story before? They all had their fill, and Jesus said, Pick up what's left, that none be wasted. And did you notice that the disciples that started out with less than half a loaf of bread, 
Each one had a whole basket full. Twelve baskets full. Now, where did the baskets come from? I suppose my great great grandfather had a basket that he had school in. Jesus multiplied the baskets too. You see, the unexpected results in life come when we take the human element out and allow Jesus in. The unexpected results in our lives happen when we no longer struggle with the issue ourselves, but give it over to God and say, guide me through it. And he went. <coughs> Five loaves and two fishes was ample. Twelve baskets full was left over. Twelve baskets full. So a little in the hands of Jesus is more than enough. When we allow Jesus to be in charge, we can expect the unexpected. Nothing is too small. No challenge is too great. It's not what we have. It's not who we are. It's who we trust and put our faith in. Never limit Jesus' power by refusing Him what little you have. Have you ever noticed that when Jesus calls upon us for a task in the church, we say, oh, but Lord, you know, I can't do this, I can't do that, I can't do something else. And the question isn't what can't you do, it is what will you do? What can you do? And he uses the one and two talented people to do most of the work in his kingdom. Remember who Jesus is. Remember Canaan, the wedding? When he took the water and it became the best wine of the evening? Remember the blind man that could see? The lame man that jumped up and walked? Remember the leper whose spots were removed? Remember the dead that was raised? Remember the storm of the sea that was quieted? Remember who Jesus is. Remember he's the one that said, hey guys, put your net on the other side of the boat and you'll catch fish. And they did. Remember that they came walking on the water to the disciples. Remember his transfiguration and his resurrection and his ascension. Remember these things and trust him with your life issues with your brokenness, with your sorrow. Trust Him with your disappointments and your grief. Trust Him with your feelings of betrayal and denial. Trust Him with the problems of life that you're confronted with this morning and the anger that churns within you sometimes. Trust Him with your feelings of loneliness. Trust Him with your illness. Trust Him with what concerns and worries you the most this morning. He will see you through it. What do you think this little boy thought about his lunch now? What do you suppose he went and told his mother? And what do you suppose her his mother said? Now I've told you a thousand times to quit exaggerating. Now you know that didn't happen. Do you suppose she believed him? But they took this little fish and bread and fed 5,000 men plus the women and children? I think she probably at least scratched her head and said, I wonder. But it happened. Unexpectedly, it happened. 
The scripture said that after Jesus had fed the multitude, doesn't say a thing about what he taught, does it? He just took care of their physical need. And afterwards, he withdrew into the mountain by himself. By himself. Because he knew what was coming next and he wasn't going to have anything to do with it because he knew that they were going to try to force him to become the king. And that would change everything. He could no longer be the innocent lamb of God dying for the sins of the world. But instead he would die as the rightfully convicted felon. And that would change everything. But would you have expected what happened next? For John says next that the disciples headed to Capernaum at night, crossing the Sea of Galilee. Now the Sea of Galilee is 600 feet below sea level. There's treacherous west winds that blow. And the north end of the sea is five miles across. And even for the most skilled fishermen, it was scary and dangerous. And sure enough, after they had rowed about three or four miles out in the sea, the waters began to churn. And they saw Jesus walking on the water to them. When the waters of your life begin to churn, you see Jesus coming for you? He does. When we're confronted with the gravest problems of life, you see Jesus walking towards you? He does. And he says to you and me the same thing he said to his disciples that night. Be not afraid. It is I. Have you heard him say that to you? Don't be afraid when life is churning around you. I am here and I am with you. And when they heard those words, they willingly received him into the boat. When life is churning, do you willingly receive him? midst of your storm and immediately the boat was at land. Two miracles took place here. First, Jesus walking on the water and secondly, immediately they were at land. Did you notice what happened? Did you catch it? 